Hey everybody, it's Zach, Tennis Pro Doc, helping you improve your game with science. And welcome back to the search for a new tennis racket using real data as well as playability tests to see which new racket is worth switching to. Today I have a battle of Yonex 98s with Yonex Ezo 98 going head to head against Yonex V Core 98. We're gonna put these two through a bunch of head to head tests, including the side by side test, suicide test, and serve test, including the serve speed and height test. And we're gonna see which one of these two rackets, if not both, is worth your money and worth your demo. Here we go. For the side-by-side -side test measuring average ground stroke speed on forehands and backhands, I had both rackets strung with Sin Gut at 53 pounds. And as you can see, the E-Zone did quite a bit better at 66 miles per hour versus the V-Core at 63.5 miles per hour. However, remember, these are fed balls. These balls have no pace on them. And that E-Zone racket is just really good at generating its own pace. So of course, that E-Zone racket from the back of the court not having any pressure on me, I was really able just to start wailing on balls from the back of the court. Now the serve test is where these two frames really shined. Average flat serve speed on the V-Core, 93 miles per hour, and on the E-Zone 98, 97.3 miles per hour. My fastest first serve speed of the year. Same thing going into slice serves. V-Core, 78 miles per hour, and E-Zone 98, 84.3 miles per hour. I think the serve test really showed how much power these rackets can generate when you're confident in a stroke. Like my serve, I've just had the same stroke for a long time, so it's pretty groove by now, so I was pretty confident just really letting my arm go on these balls and these rackets really did reward me with a lot of pace. Interestingly enough though, on the kick serve height test, I only got 121 centimeters on the V-Core and 121.6 centimeters average height on the E-Zone 98. I thought I was gonna get more height on these rackets given the 16 by 19 pattern and the head lightness of them. However, with the lower swing weight, lower mass going through the ball, maybe that ball just wasn't reaching its peak height as it got to the baseline where the sensor is. All right, so first up is the Yonex Ezo 98. This comes in 11.3 ounces strung, six points headlight, swing weight 317. Let's see how it does on maneuverability test here with the suicide test. Now with that lower stiffness and swing weight, from the back of the court, I was really able to generate some decent pace. However, as you see me moving forward, I'm really putting a lot of cover on the ball because I'm afraid I'm gonna hit it out because it's a racket, it's a trampoline. Now up at net, I was really having to squeeze pretty hard. However, moving backwards, even with a lower swing weight, this racket was still really coming through the ball and getting me great pace off my back foot. Now even though the V-Core 98 has a higher stiffness rating, it's a few grams heavier, and its swing weight's high, it was actually much more maneuverable coming up into the forecourt. I feel like I had much more options with this racket, especially up at net. And moving backwards, interestingly enough, with the higher swing weight and heavier racket, it was actually still a little bit harder to generate pace off of my back foot than the Ezo 98. Now on the Ezo 98 play test, I really noticed a couple things. Number one, I was hitting the ball a lot harder than I normally do. Number two, the ball was sailing long a lot more than it usually does on my balls. I really did notice a little bit of a lack of control when I first started playing. However, once I started playing with the racket a couple days, I did notice once I started really paying attention to my racket head speed and really reading my watch, a little more of a buggy whip on my forehand and paying attention to spin, the racket really started responding well to me. My forehands really started cracking. I started getting really nice depth on my slice backhands and my flat serve really started coming in with some heat. And the Ezo 98 just has so much elasticity in the racket, it just cracks through the ball. It really has a lot of that trampoline effect in it. Now it's also a 16 by 19 string pattern, so you do have a lot of access to spin. So you just really have to pay attention to your racket head speed, reading your watch and making sure you're getting a lot of cover on the ball. But just the one glaring thing I noticed with the E-Zone that I didn't like was when I was trading pace with people as the ball started coming over harder and harder, this racket was just harder and harder to control. Eventually, my ball would end up sailing a little bit. Whereas on some other rackets, I'd be able to absorb that pace and get it back deep, not just hit the backstop with it. Now up at net, the E-Zone 98 is kind of two-faced. I noticed if I was hitting the ball in front of me, really short volley stroke and I was squeezing the racket at impact, the ball was coming over really nice, crisp, a lot of pace, driving the ball past my opponent before they could really react to it. However, it, this is not really a touch volley racket for me. I noticed if I try to lay my wrist back, try to get a little more spin, you know, the ball was just going long or was popping up. So I really think if you're trying to hit drive volleys, this is an excellent frame. More touch volleys for me, I just didn't find that I had that control with this racket. Now, similarly on the play test of the V-Core 98, I feel like I had a lot of access to spin and power. However, it wasn't the rocket launcher that the Ezo 98 was. The V-Core had a lot more pocketing. It was a lot more of a nimble frame. I felt like I could do a lot more with the ball. And I just felt like I was a lot more in control, especially out wide, trying to get some short angle balls, as well as on my slices. I feel like I could control the direction of the slice 
a lot better on the V-Core than the E-Zone. Now where the E-Zone 98 felt a lot more elastic coming through the ball, the V-Core 98 felt a lot more crisp coming through the ball. You know, when I hit the ball of contact, this racket gave me more of that extension of your arm type feeling, almost as if the, the ball was hitting my palm. You know, I could feel like every little sensation of the ball on this racket. You just get a lot more of a tactile feeling of this racket. And that's what I really like. It just gives you a lot more creativity. The racket just feels a lot more nimble. Like you can do a little bit more with this racket from multiple points in the court. Whereas on the Ezo, and I felt like when I was back on the baseline or I was back beyond the baseline, I could really just hit some cannons and try to hit some winners from the back of the court. The V core, I felt like I could hit winners just about anywhere on the court or at least get myself back into the point from anywhere on the court. And on the same vein, up at net, the V-Core 98 just felt a lot more creative. Like I could do pretty much whatever I wanted with the ball. Even if I was scooping it up off the ground or maybe lunging for a volley or just trying to get a lot of extreme slice or extreme direction on the ball, I feel like I could absorb pace on this a lot better, pocket the ball better and put it where I wanted. I could still get that really good drive like on the E-Zone. However, this racket just gave me a lot more of that directional control that I like up at net. So for that, I, I do think for me, the V-Core was the better feeling racket. The Ezo 98 was the, just the more forgiving racket. And just a big shout out to my dad. It's 64 years old, coming off of a knee replacement and rotator cuff surgery, here out of frame, bending the ball around me up at net, really schooling a guy half his age. Now there are a lot of similarities between these rackets. Number one being the easy access to power, but more importantly, both of them have really easy access to depth which is really interesting because I haven't noticed that in some other frames I've tried. But in both Yonex, the depth is really easy to get on these rackets, almost to a fault. What was interesting is one of the days I was playtesting these, I ran into someone that plays with the Ezo 98 as well. She was a collegiate player. And I asked her what she thought about the rackets. And almost word for word, she said, you know, I love that they have easy power and I can really push my opponents around. She said, but she almost had to learn how to play a different style with more spin. She wasn't used to having to put that much spin on the ball. She said she liked it when she got used to it. She said it definitely was a different feeling and she definitely had to get used to it over time. But there are some glaring differences in these rackets too, mainly being the absorption of power. The V-Core 98 seems to be able to absorb power easier, whereas the E-Zone tends to be able to generate its own power easier. I noticed when I was playing, if I was trying to really generate some pop on a slice backhand, the E-Zone was awesome with that. I could really just lay into it and that thing would snap through the ball and I'd get a great drive. Whereas on the V-Core 98, if I was getting pushed back, maybe on like a two-handed backhand, I was really able to absorb that power and be able to kind of just get it deep, roll it back, get back in the point. Whereas sometimes on the E-Zone, if I try to trade power, the ball would just end up flying into the sky. And so I think a great way to think about these two rackets is the E-Zone is more of like a heavy metal guitar and the V-Core 98 is more like an acoustic guitar. And coming from someone that's never played competitively in Yonex like me, and I haven't had a Yonex racket in my hands in years, I did find that the V-Core 98 was an easier transition. However, I found that there was just more tools you could use with the E-Zone 98 if you knew how to use it. But if I had to describe these rackets in one word, V-Core 98 would be crisp, E-Zone 98 elastic. They both have really nice feelings, just much different from each other. So who do I think these rackets are good for and who do I think they're maybe not so good for? Well, let's start with the Ezo 98. I think if you are a baseline grinder, I think especially if you play back pretty far and you're looking for something to give you just a little bit more penetration in the court, a little more depth, I think the Ezo 98 is really good. I think maybe if you're a serve and volleyer or if you're someone that likes to stalk the baseline or someone that doesn't hit with a lot of spin, if you're more of a flat shot type hitter, it, this is probably gonna sail on you a little bit. Now with the V-Core 98, I think that the best players for this are like the aging warrior, you know, someone like me in their mid thirties now who are used to playing at a pretty high level in their teens and twenties, who just need something with still a little bit of that creativity in the racket, but just something a little more forgiving hoop. I think that's probably the best player for this racket. So in every racket play test, I ask myself the same question. What would I do to these rackets to customize them if I were going to buy them? And I think on the Ezo 98, that's a really hard question to answer because the racket is just so unique. You know, for me, I really wouldn't want any more mass in the head. I wouldn't want any more mass in the handle. It's already pretty head light. You know, I think if anything, maybe I would inject some silicone. I know that would add some mass in the handle, but just to maybe dampen it a little bit. However, if you're someone that likes that elasticity in the racket, you like that rocket launcher feeling in the racket, 
and you wouldn't want to do that. So this is a pretty hard racket to, to customize. Now on the V-Core 98, I think I might just add a little bit of mass to the handle, maybe just a little bit to the throat, just to give me a little bit more mass under my palm on this racket. That's pretty much all I would do to this. But once again, pretty unique frame. Now Yonex is one of the biggest selling racket brands right now. So I'd love to know what you think of these two rackets. Have you tried them? Do you play with them? What are your thoughts? Make sure you leave me a comment down below. Let me know. All right, until the next racket, shoe, string, ball, whatever else I find to put through the gauntlet. Hope you have a great day, great night, wherever in the world you are tuning in from. I'll see you next time.